Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. This will be a five-part series on the Beatles. This series will talk about obscure figures from the Beatles' history. And one of those figures I will be talking about tonight is Mona Best. Now, Mona Best was Pete Best's mother. What many people don't realize was that Mona Best was the Beatles' first manager. Yes, this is true. How did this happen, you ask? Well, it all started in 1960, when the Beatles went looking for a new drummer. They searched about Liverpool, and they couldn't find anybody because all the drummers in Liverpool, they were already in bands, and the Beatles were a young amateur band at this point. They'd only been around for two years, so they weren't willing to quit their bands just to join a bunch of inexperienced teenagers. It wasn't going to happen. So... They kept searching and searching and searching, and they got word that a woman named Mona Best was starting a club in her house, in her basement, as a matter of fact. It was to be called the Casbah Club. Now, they contacted Mona Best and asked her, hey, can we perform at your club? And she was like, yes, sure, you can. Just help me set it up, because it hadn't been set up yet. So the Beatles went all the way to Mona Best's house. And they painted her basement yellow, basically, set up the furniture, you know, did everything that needed to be done in that tiny little club of hers. And she let them know, hey, my son's a drummer. And so they auditioned her son. And at this point, the Beatles were desperate to take anything. And they saw his drumming and they're like, okay, he'll do, you know, we'll, we'll use him. Well, that was that. The Beatles had a drummer again. So this arrangement worked out for a while and it was okay. You know, they couldn't, at this point, they were rather inexperienced. So they didn't understand tempo or what a great drummer really was. And, you know, that was just that issue, but they were enjoying themselves. They have a nice place to play. So at least got that. They were starting to get a name out there, and, you know, that was starting to happen. They were starting to create this, just a small buzz. But this relationship started to have problems. It started to fracture because Mona Best was very controlling. She would often tell the Beatles what songs they could play or could not play. And this frustrated them to know him because they liked to play any kind of song they wanted to. It, they, they, just, they weren't guys to be told how to play their music. And also, when Pete couldn't show up for a couple of gigs, she wanted him to get paid. Well, the Beatles disagreed with that. They said, hey, if he didn't show up, he's not going to get paid. And here's the funny thing about those gigs. The man who substituted for Pete Best was a man named Richard Starkey, a.k.a. Ringo Starr from Rory Storm and the Hurricanes. So that means that Pete Best was replaced by his substitute. That is funny, and that is irony writ large. So, yeah. Well, after this arrangement, after a couple of months, the Beatles got sick and tired of Mona Best, and they were like, hey, we're not dealing with this crap anymore. We're firing Mona Best, and we're just going to go our separate ways and just get a new manager. They did, but after that, nobody really cared, because guess what? The Beatles were starting to make a small following in Liverpool. I mean, before this, they were playing teenage dances and whatnot, and were performing on tram cars and small clubs and sometimes even strip clubs or burlesque clubs. They'd performed at the small club, got a small teenage gathering, and that was it. And once they fired Mona Best, they went to Larry Parnes, who took them to bigger and better places, which is a good thing, because Larry Parnes got them to Hamburg. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you, good night, and stay fucking awesome.